The more we get them out of logic and into the emotion, mm -hmm. the more successful we'll be. And then once you're on the call, where people fuck up is they try to convince them. What I believe you should be doing is asking them questions and getting them to convince themselves. They start at point A and they want to go to point B. Mm -hmm. They're on Pain Island or Hell Island. They want to get to yeah. Heaven Island. And so what you're selling then is this gap. Welcome to the Bulletproof Entrepreneur Show, where our goal is to uncover the truth about business and introduce you to the people, the tools, and the strategies to make your mind, life, and money bulletproof. This episode is part two of a two-part mini-series special with online business legend, Brandon Carter. Brandon has been a certified personal trainer for over 20 years, and he has served as a fitness model for some of the top brands in the world, all while gaining over 3 million social media followers and over 100 million on online video views, all in the pursuit of helping millions get their minds, money, and bodies in peak condition. But none of that could have happened without the ability to sell. So in this second episode, Brandon and I reveal our best sales methods, tactics, and strategies that have resulted in over $50 million in collective sales for our companies and our clients. And now we're going to share them with you. If at any point as you're watching, if this seems helpful for you, just tap that like button. It will help the YouTube algorithm show this video to more people. That said, let's dive in. How they enter the sales conversation is just as important as what happens on the sales call. Yeah. Right. Maybe more important, right? Because mm -hmm. if you come in begging for a sales call, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get, they got to get warmed up before, mm -hmm. you know? And, and then once you're on the call where people fuck up, I think is they try to convince them mm. instead of what I believe you should be doing is asking them questions and getting them to convince themselves. There we go. Tell me yeah. more about that one. Cause this, this is where, this is where the meat is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So I learned this from my dad, right? I remember I was a little kid and he was on the phone with someone who was doing sales in his organization. And he, he was, he got mad at them for something. I don't mm. know what exactly, but I just remember him saying after he hung up the phone to me holding a, a game boy and a GI Joe, <laughs> he said, <laughs> man, Sales is not trying to convince people. You got to ask them questions. Mm. It's about ask questions. You don't tell them what to buy. You ask them questions. And I remember he was frustrated that someone didn't get that. Yeah. And I remembered that. And then I thought that that was, you know, that, that, that really stayed with me. Yeah. You know, and, you know, then I did, in college, I did a sales uh, internship with Abbott Laboratories, big Fortune 500 company. And I had a, a sales manager there who he was really good mm. and, but he did the same thing and i think because it was pharmaceuticals right you can't they can't make the sale to the doctor mm. right they have to convince the doctor to right. make the sale <laughs> to their client right right so they had to i saw him ask questions mm -hmm. about his clients conditions or or patients conditions and then he would explain how the drug could help them with that yeah and then he would ask them does that sound like something you'd be interested in like prescribing you think you yeah they would say yeah yes and he would say stuff like uh just so why not why this instead of something else though mm -hmm. you know like uh, and he would and then they would reaffirm and i remember picking up on that and i was like oh this is just like one of my dad yeah was saying and then as i went into sales i i adopted that policy is really just asking good questions to get them to convince themselves. So what makes a good question? Good question. See, <laughs> <laughs> you're learning. <laughs> nah, it's, um, you kind of have to know where you want to go. So it's a dance. It has to be orchestrated, right? You know, Freud said, said that people are always moving towards pleasure or away from pain. Like all, mm. every decision humans make, that's the underlying, yeah. um, behind it so i think first you have to ask you know so w why they want the product or service mm -hmm. and what's it going to do for them yeah what, what not even why, why they want it right you ask them what, what are their goals what are they trying to accomplish yeah but then you got to go deeper like what makes that important to you mm -hmm. or what, what's that going to mean for you for example let's say a guy wants to get a drill so he goes to a hardware store right and he says i need a drill and, and maybe the if it's a good salesperson there, he'll say, oh, man, so what kind of stuff are you trying to trying to build? Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, man, I'm trying to put up these shelves. OK, all right. So what are you going to put on the shelves, man? You know, oh, I'm going to put uh, all these books. Yeah. Well, uh, OK. And all right. So 
I'm, I'm trying to get all these books. I'm trying to clean up the, the house. Right. And say, OK, yeah. So and let's say he asks why he wants to do that. Let's say just say he does. Right. He said, oh, man, because my girlfriend is fucking tripping about all the, <laughs> the yep. books and shit everywhere. All right. So he's not really buying a drill. Right. He's buying a happy home. Correct. Right. And that's what we sell him. We sell him the drill as a what as a means to get the happy home. Yeah. He doesn't really give a fuck about the drill. So a bad salesperson would tell him, oh, man, this drill has the, the bits and the parts and it has yep. this many watts and all this other shit. He doesn't give a fuck about that. Mm-hmm. All he cares about is shutting up that woman. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's what we sell him. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The way I would look at it, because we just went over this with uh, we, we hired a couple of new sales guys and we were kind of starting from some of the basics on, on mm-hmm. one of our calls. And it's good to remind ourselves of what are the basics. And hopefully this actually records so I can show this on the video. All right. But like the way I look at it is what you're establishing right now is they're at point A right now. Mm-hmm. So that's where they start. They start at point A and they want to go to point B. Mm hmm. So this would, what you're saying is the pleasure. Yeah. They're saying pleasure island. This is, they're on pain island or hell island. They want to get to yeah. heaven island, right? And so what you're selling then is this gap. And so that hammer or whatever was a drill. Drill, the drill yeah. is what fills this gap and allows that person to get to heaven island, which heaven island isn't I want to drill. Heaven island is I yeah. want this thing done so that she, I stop getting nagged. Yeah. Right? Well, it's actually more than that. Tell me, um, shit, man, let me, let me draw something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so let's, let's use a personal training, mm-hmm. right? You ask a person, why, why did, why did they want personal? Why did they want personal training? Mm-hmm. Okay. Boom. Well, you, okay. That's personal training is a product. Okay. Mm-hmm. What, it, what they want is they want to be fit. Right. Okay. Well, what exactly does that mean? When you cause they'll say something, I just want to be fit. Well, what exactly does it mean? Oh, that means, um, can you be more specific? Oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. Mm-hmm. Right. Boom. I want to lose 20 pounds. Okay. So, um, what made you pick that number? Mm-hmm. Oh man. You know, well, cause I'm, um, I'm overweight right now. And you know, if I lost 20 pounds, maybe I'd have more, more confidence. I, I feel better, look better, you know, say, okay, okay. Feel better. Now, some people might stop there. Right. But I don't think that's far enough. Right. OK. And, and when you say feel better, tell me more about that. You know, OK. Oh, man, I, I have more confidence. You know, I just have more energy. Um, you know, maybe you say something like that. OK. What's that going to what's how's that going to change your life? Mm-hmm. Mm, oh, well, you and know, so what I, are you trying to accomplish family? as you're doing this? Yeah. As you're doing this question cycle. And how do you know when you're done? I think you go you go, you know, you're done when they have uncovered things that they didn't realize. Tell me more about what you yeah, mean. So, I know what you mean. Yeah, so there's going to be a point where they get, you'll see them thinking mm-hmm. about it. And like, man, I hadn't really thought about it that way. Right? Mm-hmm. You know? And and basically you keep going down this, what's that going to do for you? How's that going to improve your life? What's that going to mean for you? You know, and yeah. then I'll go further like, okay, man, how, how, would you, how would your family feel about that? If you lost, if you lost that weight and you were start, you started to feel better, have more energy, what would that mean for your, for, for your family, for your children? Mm-hmm. Oh man, I, they'd be proud. Maybe I, you know, I'd, I'd be able to play with them more. I'd have more energy. You know, we have more fun together. Oh man. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. let, let's just take it. Let's say we, you can, you can do this infinitely. Yeah. I think you, you kind of, it, it's feel for me. It's yeah. feel. You might have yeah. a different take, right? But I, I think it's feel, right? So let's, so maybe this guy and every guy's different, every girl's different, right? But maybe is his family is the is the main is the main thing making them happy or being around for them living longer it could be anything yeah but he the the bad salesman stops here mm-hmm. the okay salesman uh, not even okay the mediocre salesman will stop here mm-hmm. but the the further the deeper you go yeah that's where you, that's that's where the meat is you know yeah. and then and then you sell them that however after you paint that vision I think you got to bring in the pain mm-hmm. right and. All right, man. So, what, what's what's been holding you back from accomplishing? The goal? It's like, oh man, it's a, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I can't stick to a diet, right? Mm, you know, t- tell me more about that. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh man, you know, I, I see the cakes and candies, and I'm just hungry. I was like, mm, how's that affecting your progress? Yeah, right. You know, oh, like, you yeah. Know, what oh, do man. you feel is keeping you yeah. from sticking to a diet? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and then, yeah. So and then you you say something to the. I always say something to the. So like, man, it, it, if that were to continue, where, where do you think that's mm-hmm. that's going to lead? <laughs> right, yeah. right. So we bring we 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 and uncover more thing. This gap, yeah. You're making this gap. Wider, yeah, you're right. You're right. increasing the gap more. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're. This was a good analogy. You 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 you're moving this even 
You're making yeah, this bigger. Yeah, okay, okay. It's kind of like this is good. I hope this works. <laughs> but basically, what you're what you're saying is mm. kind of what we call chunking down. Mm. So it's like make the pay, all the all the reality on the pain and then all the reality of the pleasure. And then when you pitch, what you're doing is you're taking these things here and these things here and putting them into the pitch of the gap. Exactly. And you're basically saying, well, do you see how uh, this and the solution is what fills the gap? Right. And and it's important. What's critical is a lot of people. One of two things will happen when somebody's watching this. One, they're going to say, oh, you're manipulating that person. Mm -hmm. Right. However, However, um, I'm not saying they're wrong. Either. Well, let's sit there for a second. Hang yeah. on, hang on. Mm-hmm. Not to interrupt your point, mm-hmm. but the word manipulate. Do you know the definition of the word manipulate? What's the what's the official Webster's dictionary definition? Is to handle skillfully. Mm. Literally. Yeah. So when people people have a negative connotation yeah. for a word, right? Mm-hmm. It will prevent them from actually being successful. Because let's be honest, how do you want to handle your life? Skillfully or unskillfully? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you need to be a manipulator. Otherwise, you will be manipulated by outside forces. Yeah, I, I manipulate myself. That's what I'm saying. Every day. So you're either the manipulator or the manipulated. Yeah, yeah. And if you're not where you want to be, you're the manipulated. Yeah, that's a fact. And that's so a fact. ultimately, everything that you want is filling these gaps is when you help enough people get here, you have to manipulate them to get them there. Because yeah. if they could manipulate themselves, they'd already be they'd there. Already be there. So somebody's got to be the catalyst. Yeah. You can't just leave it up to chance. And another thing that's important about this is we're not creating the pain. Right. There we're, I got it. We're uncovering. Yep. Right. You know, people do this thing where they don't want to look at their problems. They're like, oh, I'm not that bad. Or I'm that. not that bad. <laughs> yeah. They don't want to look at their bank account. Yeah. 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 They don't want to they don't want to see it. But we're, we're making them focus on it. Yep. No, no, this is real. Mm-hmm. Like they said it. These are their words. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is like, it's still real for you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the, they're, they're, they're their words. They have to uncover their pain. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's real. It's already there. We're just getting them to really look at yeah. what's really happening. Yep. I actually think this is, a, I do this with myself. Like I'll, when I'm trying to set my goals, I go through the sales script with me. Yeah. May, and maybe I don't have the solution, but I'm trying to, but at the beginning of my sales script, I try, I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's been, what do I want? Why do I want it? Mm-hmm. Right. What's, 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 uh, what's preventing me from getting there? How's that affecting my progress? I go through the whole process yep. for myself and then, but I, I might have to find the solution. Yeah. Right. But on a sales call, you potentially have the solution. Yeah. Right. And, and you sell them this, right? So once, once you have all the, 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 the pain and the pleasure, and then what I like to do is I take them down to, I, I kind of like to summarize what they say. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Does it sound like I have a good understanding? What I'm hearing is. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and they'll say, yeah. And then instead of saying, I think this is a place where a lot of people fuck up. So. Mm. Instead of saying, oh, man, I'll do this for you and I gotta do this. I say, well, here's how we've helped, you know, clients with similar uh, problems that you have. But would it be OK if I explain that to you? Yeah. And they'll say, of course, they'll say, yeah. And then basically. For example, the, the meal plan. Guys, all right. So what we do for our clients is we give them a custom meal plan, but we work with them. Yeah. Right. To incorporate the foods that they really enjoy so they don't feel like they're they're restricting themselves. And this allows them to eat the food they want while losing weight Mm -hmm. right and it's so much easier for them to maintain their diet they don't they're not as frustrated as you said you feel uh they're actually excited every day because they look at the scale and it keeps going down uh while they're still eating the foods they enjoy that sounds like something you might be interested in yeah (laughs) right but of course it is it's just it's it's, it's exactly what he said he needed 100 percent, and it's going to give him exactly right and and if they say, yeah, they say, okay, well, what makes you say that? Yeah. Right. You're really getting them to sell yeah. themselves. Right? Yeah. You shouldn't be really selling. Mm-hmm. It's like you should get them to sell themselves. And the beauty yeah. of that is you're only selling them what they want and what they need. There might be way more things that your product will do. Yeah. Leave it out. Who cares? Right. percent. Like if you have the drill, if you're the drill guy, man, it's got so much wattage and it's, yeah. he doesn't give a fuck about that. Mm-hmm. Right. All unless he came in and say it, said he yeah. needed more I'm, wattage. I'm here for wattage. Yeah. Then it's like, that's all we're going to talk <laughs> yeah, about. Right. right. <laughs> right? But, it, it, but man, yeah. we're going to sell him the, the we're going to sell him the aspects of the product or service that he needs and wants right. and leave out everything else. Better yet, we're going to ask him about 
why the aspects of the product that we're selling him are important to him. So he sells himself on the aspects yeah. of the product. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Like yeah. On the on your transition when you were like, would it be okay if I explained it to you? Instead of what, what we do, and that works, of course, mm. what we do is be like, well, thanks so much for sharing all this information with mm. me. Um, I mean, I could share with you how we've helped our clients get from A to B. Um, but it's up to you. You tell me what you want to do. For yeah, me. That, that's similar to how that's super similar how we do it. We'll after we do a summary, we say, "All right, man, so um, where do you want to go from here?" Yeah, right. And then they, sometimes they say, "Oh, what to tell me about what you do?" Yeah, yeah. Or, okay, you sure? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or 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 they say, "I don't know." Well, then mm-hmm. I'll say, "Well, it would be appropriate if we if I can explain how mm-hmm. we help our clients with similar situations as, as you." Yeah, you know, some, something to that effect. But yeah. the whole thing is not push, not being yeah. pushy, right? In fact, we're almost pulling away, mm-hmm. right? When you push, you get pushed back. Yeah. Right. Well, think about, I use the the needy guy at the bar mm-hmm. analogy, right? Mm-hmm. Dude, just like super needy, beggy, just is yeah. like sad to watch. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's just like, it's watching a train wreck in slow motion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the guy who doesn't give a fuck, right? Yeah. He's yeah. way more attractive. So yeah. that which you chase runs away from you. That yeah. which you essentially run away from chases you. And that's the thing you want, you, you also, you kind of want them, if you've done this skillfully, they should be Chasing begging you, you yeah. to buy, right? Yeah. Oh man, you can solve all my problems. Yeah. Because you've asked questions. It's allowed them to be like, well, nobody else has asked me questions yeah. like that. This person must know their shit. Cause the last guy just tried to pitch me some fucking wattage. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know? And you ask them, you make them think about their situation in mm-hmm. a way they may not have thought about. Like yeah. we're uncovering more pleasure yeah. and uncovering more pain than they, than they thought about. Right. Right. It's almost because that's, that's like what a psychiatrist would do, mm-hmm. right? You it's one hundred percent. Yeah, that's all every. That's why everything in life is getting through people from point A yeah. to point B. Yeah, that's literally everything, right? Yeah. yeah. So what you have to establish is what is point B, and then get very clear on point A. Yeah. So like we were talking about uh, yesterday in episode one <laughs> of uh, of the Brandon Carter show, yeah. um, <laughs> we were talking about you said you have your hate list and your great list. So basically, it's the same. It's yeah. the same thing, right? You're doing it to yourself. We're just getting clear on what their hate list is about exactly where they're at yeah. and it's asking like why is that bad why is that bad what's bad about that what other areas is that affecting why are those areas impacted mm-hmm. man why does that suck basically yeah yeah you right. know what and if you don't do this you do you wish that you had the limitless pill well this 100k a month thinking system might just be the next best thing if you're feeling frustrated and stuck in your business and you just want to operate at the level that you know that you're capable of i'd like to invite you to click the link in the description and get instant access to my seven figure mindset secret system where i I'm going to walk you through step by step everything that you need to start thinking like a millionaire and begin seeing shifts in your business in 24 hours or less. So go check that out and let's get back to the show. And if you don't do this, you do them as a service. 100%. Because even while you have the client, you might have to still do this. For example, I trained this guy when I when I was an in-person trainer. I was training this guy who was in the NFL mm-hmm. and he played for the Detroit Lions. Hey. And then all yeah, yeah. And then the off season, well, it's not story. You know, I don't like story. <laughs> Who likes a story that that, that starts About with the, the word? Yeah, yeah. There's no stories, you know, I, that are good. And nothing good happens in Detroit. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> while we're here now. <laughs> but so I was training this guy and you know, we worked out super hard mm-hmm. the first the first time and he threw up. And I'm like, hey, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm thinking I can push him really hard. And yeah. I felt like I needed to, right? Because mm-hmm. he, you know, the Lions were struggling. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> and I, 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 I feel like it was my job to turn this season around <laughs> yeah, single handedly. Yeah. <laughs> and and he would start like canceling some workouts. Mm. And I'm like, mm. and what I wanted to say, like, bro, this is like, they just did a draft. They drafted some. Uh, they drafted another guy in your position. Mm-hmm. You know, first round, right? Like you are fighting for your spot. You're going to have to go in and compete for your spot. And I thought it, but I didn't say it. Right. Mm-hmm. Because I think it was like over 15 years ago. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it, like he had so much more status to me. Sure. that I was kind of like kissing his ass a little bit. Yeah. And it, I, I didn't tell him, Hey man, what's going to happen if you don't work out hard in all season, you come by with this new hot shot rookie mm-hmm. comes in, you know, mm-hmm. how do you think it's going to work out for you? If, yeah. if you're not well conditioned and trained and focused, Yeah. that's what I should have did. Mm-hmm. Because he would have told me, oh, I, I, I might get replaced. Yeah. Is that the worst that can happen? No, I might, I might get cut, right? I didn't do anything. Mm. He got cut. Oops. Yeah, he got cut. And then next thing you know, he's got a, uh, he's, he's selling a Lambo. 
Yeah. Right. He's selling Lambo, moving out the mansion. Right. And now he's just a guy. <laughs> yeah. Right. He's just a guy working a regular job. Yeah. Like like everyone else. He went from playing a starter in the NFL to a guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He he made some money, right? But it's it's he's got to, he's got to work now. He's yep. got a legit straight up. He's got to learn what we're what we're talking about now, right? But had <laughs> I had I manipulated him, right? I could have, you know, we could have worked real hard that that mm-hmm. off season and maybe something different would happen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, are you are you supremely confident that yeah. you just keep doing what you're doing? There's zero chance at all of being yeah. replaced by anyone else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think that you think the guy they drafted in your position is taking off all summer? Yeah. Before his first his rookie season in the NFL, yeah, is that what you believe? Do you think there's any <laughs> chance that he could be working harder than you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that's what I should have done. Yeah, I should have manipulated him, mm-hmm. and maybe I could have saved his career. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's why I don't look at it negative, right? If you're doing it, if you're doing it for a positive reason, I think it's 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 fine, right? Like I'm I'm manipulating my son, huh? you know, all yeah. the time. Like, hey, hey buddy. It's literally so. It's funny because we we touched a little on on quantum physics yesterday, mm-hmm. right? So this is literally, if you watch some of our of our other stuff, we have positive and negative charges, if you will. Yeah. And this is literally the structure of the atoms in the physical universe. Right, right. And so neutrons, electrons. Correct. Yeah. The only way to move the physical universe around mm. is to create an energy transference and shift between atoms. Yeah. And so that requires manipulation. You gotta do it. You have to. In order to transform the physical universe, I have to manipulate stuff. Yeah. Skillfully, right? And so it's literally like you haven't you have no choice but to learn this. You have no choice. And you have to do it to yourself as well. You have to. Right? Exactly. You have to do it. You have to do it to yourself. You know, like I deliberately put myself in situations where, you know, I I I create I create this pain and pleasure, right? Yep. Like I hang out with guys more with more money than me. Yep. It's hard, it keeps getting harder and harder to find these guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I hang out with them, right? You know, I was yep. with Cardone not long ago. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's telling me a story about one time he was on one of his jets, all right? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> all right, it's time no. to step up. See, but, you know, instead of getting jealous, jealous, I was like, oh, man, all right, that's what I need to yeah. hit for, right? And also, so you know. You just, you know, yeah, highlighting I, the where you're at. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that that experience did both things for yeah. me, right? Because, you know, I, I was at his headquarters, big organization, Rolls Royce in front, you mm-hmm. know, he's about to, he's telling me stories about how he's on his jet and he's doing a, a conference. I'm like, okay, it kind of like, okay, I'm not, this, well, I'm not at the mountaintop. Yeah. Right. Okay. How do I get, how do I get further? How do yeah. I keep going? You know? Yeah. And I think that's good. Yeah. I think that's, that's super, super good. So I manipulate myself mm-hmm. to, to, to go after something positive. Yeah. You know? And that's asking it all is with the right questions. I, I talk about being interested instead of being interesting. Yeah. Right. It's, it's where, because I see this in, in my sales guys too. I'm sure you've seen it in yours where like, they're like, okay, questions, be interested, got it. And they like do a good job. And then like, they see the prospects starting to shift mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, I got this bitch in the bag. And then they start telling and ruin the whole fucking thing. Yeah, selling and, is not telling. That's correct. I have a software, we record our sales calls and I can see the percentage yes. of how much my sales guys talk versus the other person. Yep. And it, man, I'm looking for 80, 20, mm-hmm. like 80%. <laughs> that's the, the, the yep. prospect talking. Because, so you read the book, uh, Never split the difference, mm-hmm. Chris Voss, mm-hmm. right? FBI hostage negotiator. Here's the long. It's one of my. This book changed my understanding of how the whole game works. Yeah, I don't recall exactly when I read it. Uh, it was maybe like five, six years ago at this point um, for the first time. But it was he who has the more information about the other person always has the leverage in the negotiation. Mm. So how do you get information about the other person by talking at them? Yeah, or by asking questions. Yeah, and asking strategic questions. And that totally changed everything for me. I think where people and I want your take on this. Um, were, because I had I reviewed one of my guys' calls the other day. Um, and he was asking the right questions Mm -hmm. for the most part in terms of like standard stock, like doing a good job. But the guy was kind of like, yeah, fine. Oh, he wasn't going into it. And so he, he didn't call that out. He tried to call it out and the guy was like, no, good. Yeah. It was just like, you get that sometimes. For me, what I do at that point is like. You, a no great deal ever started at, by just ignoring that, yeah, and like yeah. blowing past it. So I think 
I don't want your take on this because I told him, I'm just like, you got to sit there and like, there's something on his mind right there. Like mm-hmm. at some point in the call that shifted where he kind of shut down yeah. and he doesn't want to say what it is. That's yeah. where the leverage is. That's where it really is. And so where I go is just very uh, pointed and straight at him, not to attack, but mm-hmm. like, look, man, you said you wanted point B right now. You're at point A. Mm-hmm. Um, I, do you still want that? Yes. All right, cool. So I could be totally reading you wrong, right? Um, starting something with a self-deprecating, like yeah. I could be a total moron right now, right. but, uh, <laughs> what I'm, I'm, I'm sensing, um, that there's, there's something sitting there that might be a little uncomfortable, or maybe I said something that upset you in some way. Yeah. I just want to clear it up. Cause you and I both know that, you know, if, if you like the guy's married, let's say, mm-hmm. right. You ever had a argument with your wife and mm-hmm. like, you're like, Hey, how's it going? She's like, fine. Yeah. Is she fine? Yeah. Right. No. Right. Exactly. So when you're saying like, yeah, good, fine. It, I'm, I could be totally misreading this, yeah. but it, I just want to make sure that we're good, that we're on the same page, that we're, that we're, you know, cause I'm, I'm here for you, not for me. Yeah. You know? So is there something going on? Like what, what's going on? Mm. You know? And like really, and just sit there and just be like, look, man, I can't, even if he's like, no, just pitch me motherfucker. Right. Like, I'll just be like, well, I, I would be doing you a disservice. And the reason for that is oh, I've never had a client come in based on that premise and it really went well yeah. ever and so if you come in i want it to go well is that what you want to mm-hmm. yeah so i'm just not to be i'm not trying to be a nuisance here but right. like i just want to make sure that this is a good use of our time yeah you know so i don't know what are your thoughts what's going on <laughs> you know like really stay just like, call I it out not i will not continue i don't care mm-hmm. if they demand it like they're not running the fucking show yeah if they were running the show they wouldn't be on the call with me to solve a fucking problem yeah That's why they're here you know so what are your thoughts on that um first of all that book is super good yeah with chris voss and um the book that really i think the best sales book it's not a sales book and it's it's almost cliche to the, the amount of time just gets recommended but how to win friends and influence people mm-hmm. right it, it's it's basically, I, I look at it from that, right? And Chris Wall's book is really good too. Um, I read it like multiple, multiple times, yeah. you know, um, but How to Win Friends and Influence People is my favorite book in the world. And it's the same thing, asking questions, but like when you get what you're talking about, it happens sometimes, but it doesn't happen a lot with our guys because one thing we really focus on is the energy, mm-hmm. right? You, so you heard of um, mirror, nu- mirror neurons, right? So it's basically like when you see someone experiencing emotion, mm-hmm. you kind of feel it to some yeah, degree, yeah, yeah. right? That's why, like, if you people cry in movies mm-hmm. or you know people get horny from watching pornography, right? It's like mirror neurons, yeah. right? So one thing we really focus on with new sales guys is being able to manipulate the other person's energy with your energy Mm -hmm. right you know so when we're talking about the pleasure yeah we 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 try to get excited not like crazy excited but like oh man so what's that gonna do for you man Mm -hmm. that sounds amazing right it's facial expressions tonality like we really focus on that and to the point where they get more excited about their future yeah and and then but then when we talk about the pain it's also like oh man it must right. be really tough. Yeah. It's, it's real like tonality, yeah. almost almost like a performance, yeah. right? Because they'll feel it more, yeah. right? So and the more we get them out of logic and into the emotion, mm-hmm. right, the the more successful we'll be. For example, it's like, you know, logic is here, you know, like the, the neocortex, that part of the brain, but like in the older part of the brain, the midbrain, the limbic system, right? That's that's where the decisions are really made. And the neocortex, the logic part just executes the decision, right? So you almost have to bypass that part of the brain yeah. and go straight to the emotions. Yeah. Right. Well, you words know? are only 7% of communication. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you'll get that less if you focus more on that, like not even what you're saying, just how you're saying it. How you, that's why we do. Yeah. That's why we do all our calls on zoom. Yeah. Because you can just like, we do too. Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. do things with your facial expressions. So I'll make the guys do these drills, right? Where, uh, I, I'll be on Zoom and I'll private message one. I mm-hmm. say, all right, show me this emotion. And then I'll probably, and I'll tell the other one, all right, I want you to tell me what emotion he's feeling. Mm-hmm. Right. Nice. You know, and so one, the, 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 the person who's doing it gets better at expressing it. And the other person who's looking at it gets better at reading it. Cause you really have to read the emotions. Right. So you can like, just, you still have to call it out the way you said it. Yeah. Right. But, but you have to know what to yeah, call out. And you'll probably get, you'll probably see, if you really train yourself on this, you'll you'll feel it before they start shutting 100%. down. You know what I'm saying? And that way you can know you need to make an adjustment. So kill the monster while it's small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't wanna 
handle objections as much as you want to prevent objection. Hundred percent. You know, well, like, that's the whole part of the. I mean, in a, in a call, there's essentially there's the first chunk is like discovery, mm. and then that's where it's the introduction to the explaining of the solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if they're going to give you all of the ammunition in the discovery that you need yeah. to handle whatever objection mm -hmm. they may have. Like, I don't, there should be no objection after a price drop other than a price objection. Yeah, it should, that, exactly. It should just be, I like, really want it. I know I need it. I know I need it now. I've got to do it. It's just financial logistics. If you did a good job, you all you should be job. doing is helping them figure out Correct. how to pay for it. Correct. Right. You shouldn't really be handling two objections right. unless it's, unless you, if, if you do, right, then the only objection is fear. Mm -hmm. Right. Just too much fear. Right. Because it's that's it, also handleable in discovery. Though. That's also handled 100 percent. Like we, we we work that into our script. Yeah. You know, we have a whole yeah. thing about fear before the price drop because we want to we want to we want to handle it before. Yeah. Now, how well of a job you did, you, you'll find out when yeah. you drop the price. Well, a, <laughs> I, I talk about it as belief shifting. Mm. And so what like in our in your marketing and in your sales, it's like what are the core beliefs that people need to have in order to make buying your shit a no brainer? Mm. Right. And so if they believe that the product is more important than that fear yeah. and it's worth whatever it is to handle that fear and you do that before a price drop, yeah. then by the time a price drop shows up, at the very least, if they forgot that you already handled it, you could remind them or remember what you said earlier about this thing. Yeah. So, for example, um, if the if you have a feeling that a fear is going to be coming up, for example, after mm -hmm. a price drop, as that's the objection during discovery, yeah. be like, well, I mean, you want to handle this for good, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So if you want to handle it for good, what would you expect that to an investment or a commitment like that to be? Yeah, if, yeah. Like if it was actually really good. Yeah. And there, you're going to also be able to test their temperature on what they're expecting the investment to be mm -hmm. and see how far away you actually are from it. Mm -hmm. So if they're like $47, yeah. you'd be like, so what you're telling me is you plan on like in your case, you plan on completely reversing 20 years of horrible habits, magically have enough leverage on yourself to do it with only $47 worth of skin in the game. Mm. Walk me through how how you see that going. We had different styles, but yeah. it's the same thing, right? That's why I like talking to other sales because everybody's style is different. Yeah. It's kind of like a like a rapper. Everyone mm -hmm. has a different flow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's still rap and it still accomplishes the same thing, right? Or, or, uh, or a singer, mm -hmm. they have a different tone or yeah. a different timbre to their voice. So we have a different style. Uh, I, I think you're, you're more call them out on their bullshit yeah, than, and it's also and it's not good or bad with our with our company, with your demographic, but, yeah, and it yeah. goes well. I mean, obviously, it's doing well. Man. I saw the Ferrari. I'm sorry, you know, <laughs> uh, where my style is super. super laid back yeah right you know and it's not better or worse mm -hmm. right it, it it this is probably situations where like it's better to be more aggressive you know yeah uh um it's super laid back i'm like james bond on vacation that's what i think about so i the way i would handle that is it's more is more like they said forty seven dollars. I'd be like, all right, man. So listen, you did like I would I would say with more of a joke. Uh, okay. I'm saying the same jovial. thing, yeah, with a different tone, yeah, right. You know, like almost the same thing. I'm like, all right, so you're telling me that you would believe me if I said that you can <laughs> solve twenty seven yeah. years of overeating and bad work with with forty seven dollars. You wouldn't think that was a scam, mm. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, but that's that, that, it's interesting. Like, but yeah. we're still it's still the same thing, yeah. It's just, I think, uh, I think I might overcompensate for looking super aggressive, covered mm. with tattoos and being big, right? Um, we'll buy, not to say you're not big, right? You, you might be a little taller than me, Come on, right? <laughs> but it, I think I might overcompensate by being more jovial. And just like, you know, Americans have a s subconscious fear of, of black guys, right? Even me, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Every time I was robbed, it was a black guy. <laughs> you might want to edit that out. It's the truth, right? So, like, I think I, I think I know that that is, like even when I walk in the stores, I don't put my hands in my pocket, right? Because I'm mm -hmm. like, oh man, they probably gonna think I'm stealing, right? You know, I don't want to cause alarm. So maybe I overcompensate on that end. But it, what I what I do is, and I'm also trying to get a state shift, mm -hmm. right? I'm also trying to comp because if they're like all oh, tense or weird, is I find it difficult to get them in the buying state, then, mm. right? I don't want them to feel bad about buying. I want them to be, to thank me when they're yeah. talking, right? So like, I'm, I, if he's being weird, 
if I'm more jokey, right? Yeah. That time, it's like it's an instant state shift. You know? Yeah, that's it's interesting because it's a uh, again like we talked about in uh, in our other episode, mm-hmm. uh, which guys, if you guys haven't watched it, links in the description. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but in our in our other episode, we were talking about everything being a tool, right? Yeah. And so it's like I I'll get people laughing, but. I also have experienced, and we have, we both have different styles. They both work, yeah. but we also have a lot of the same tools. And we kind of like there's there's a bunch of different ways to get to point B. Yeah, you know. But I think fundamentally, what I've found is there is at times where if it's too jokey, now all of a sudden yeah. it's too it's it's tough to get them reassociated with a pain. Yeah, right. And so I'll be like, come on, man, you're telling me this like that if, makes sense. If that makes a lot of too sense. jokey. It'll distract them from the fact that this is fucked up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that um, makes a lot. Of sense. I think there is a. I'll, I'll drop in things here and there that you know, if I sense them getting really heavy, yeah. then I'll, I'll lighten them up a little bit. Cause if you get too, they get too heavy. Now you, there's no in anymore. Uh, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, but you want them as low as possible to really, to get associated with the pain, the reality of yeah. the situation. If they I, cry, that's the best scenario. That the, yeah, that's correct. Criers are buyers. That's correct. If they cry, but the thing is you're not manipulate. I mean, I don't I mean, you know, are. I mean, I guess. Right. But like they're crying about something that's happening yeah. to them. What is they're really real crying shit? about is it's really, reminding them that they have been ignoring this problem and they feel like shit about it. We are and it's really, finally yeah. now they're going to do something about it. And it's like they're finally facing reality and nobody else, quite frankly, probably had the skill or the ball yeah. to allow them the space to face that reality. Because people mask their problems, right? They, they mask it with, you know, um, uh, pleasure, hedonism, going out, right? They yeah. have all these problems. Oh, I'm fat, but I can, you know, I can still, right. I still have a wife who will have sex I'm with me poor, sometimes. I'm poor, but yeah, my you know. friends are still, you know, yeah, yeah, all I still got, together. Yeah, 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 you know, it's like, but I'm happy. They'll, they'll come up with all these yeah. justifications, right, to to make themselves feel yeah. better about the pain. But it's like what we're doing is kind of like that scene in Fight Club, yeah, where he's where he's burning himself yeah. and he tries to yeah. he tries to go other places. That's what people do with their lives. No, 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 look at the pain. Yeah, it's there. That's it's, not, it's real. We yeah. got to fix this. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and and they want to fix it. That's why they're on the call with you. Yeah, if your marketing is skillful. Yeah, right. Is is Maybe it's different in a cold calling um, scenario, but, you know. Well, even let's go back to like something that's not an actual like sales call on the phone. Mm. Even just um, let's say you're you're navigating a, a challenge with uh, a spouse or just a friend yeah. or whatever or parent, something like that. It's still the same process. Yeah. Right. It's still like, well, I mean, I don't know. We both want this result. Yeah. Right. Is that what like, what do you want from like, we're both on the same team on the same team. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas most people are like, oh, I don't like sales because I, I don't I'm not confrontational. People think sales is confrontational. It should be. It should be collaborative. Right. Yeah. And so like what the analogy is, like we're both on opposite sides of the table right now. My goal is to get on this to get on yeah. the same side of the table. And we're that's that's cause, super because people, people want to have something to fight against most people have you ever you've heard the concept of matchers and mismatchers no so matchers are people that um you and i are more of a, a matcher like mm-hmm. at least with each other mm-hmm. right so i'll be like hey man let's go do this you'd be like all right cool mm-hmm. right whereas a mismatch will be like hey let's go do this they'd be like well i don't know i don't mm-hmm. know if we should so it's it's the opposite they'll always play devil's advocate they'll always find uh, the reason not to they'll always find the antithesis mm-hmm. and so with those people that's why for and most people are are mismatchers mm-hmm. right and the reason is is because they've been fucked over by everything else from their point of view in their entire life yeah. that everything's bad yeah. and they're trying to avoid it and come up with reasons why everything's bad yeah right? and so when you remind them essentially of something that they're dealing with that is is a pain they'll want to be like oh it's not it's not a pain mm-hmm. right and that's why when you ask a question like um well it sounds like everything's going all right they'll be like no nah. Yeah. Right. Versus if you sound, it was like, it sounds like it's pretty bad. They'd be like, no, it's actually pretty good. Right. Yeah. And so all of these, all of these little tools, um, I mean, it, so going back to like the, the solving of the spouse thing is like, once you can get people on the same page, now you're mismatching against the same thing. Yeah. Right. And so sense. now you're fighting the same beast that isn't each other. Right. Right. And so the faster that you can let the other person know, like we both want the same thing. We're mm-hmm. fighting the same battle against the same common enemy. Yeah. And now it's like an in crowd, out crowd, us versus them in a little micro environment of two people yeah. versus this enemy over here that we've identified called fat, right. or called procrastination or called brokenness. Right. Yeah. We're now fighting to together against brokenness and you have a you have a you know a fellow warrior with you yeah and that's why i changed i changed a lot of the the even the internal dialect within our organization like we don't refer to ourselves guys as killers or nothing like that you know because i i don't want 
them to think like they're going to war against the prospect. And well, you can still be killers just against killing what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You, uh, but I'm, you know, the, the, you're, you're right. But the, the, the terminology, I think I, yeah, I, yeah, it can yeah. be misconstrued. And I think about, listen, man, our job is to help them get what they got on the call for. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And you're on the, the same, the same page, right? You know, with, with them, I, what you said is spot on. It's a collaborative experience. You're just helping them yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Right. You're more of a therapist than anything 100%. else. Cause what does a therapist do? It helps you like navigate your emotions. Well, they or try. Change. Yeah, yeah. Right. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're, you really gotta be skillful at changing other people's emotions. And what I tell my sales guys is, I want you to practice manipulating people's states around you yeah. all the time, right? So if you, I'm talking about give the make the waitress laugh, the the chick at CVS, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like everybody, you should be able to change anyone's state at will, mm-hmm. right? And what that does is, it's also a good way to live, right? Because now you're literally going around making people happy, yep. right? <laughs> and it would do once you once you. Yeah. Be, built that habit, then like state control, controlling other people's state yep. is, is, a, is almost like a superpower and helps you navigate life a lot better. Yeah. You know? And what, what I think keeps people from really diving into the subject and, and having an affinity for it is because of that power and responsibility. So with great power comes great responsibility. Mm-hmm. So if you have the power to um, influence and manipulate like you're talking, most people um, have experience of mishandling power and responsibility. Mm. So um, they go, I subconsciously, they're going, I don't deserve that kind of power. I shouldn't have it because every time in the past that I've had responsibility, Uh, I've fucked it up in some way, shape or form, whether that was in childhood and you, you know, took your mom's car out and you crashed it or or bumped into something or you forgot to feed the dog, like all those little things Mm. stack up and you go, you know what? You take responsibility because I don't trust myself. Mm. Right. And so when you're delegating responsibility, you're also delegating income. So <laughs> yeah. the, the greater responsibility that you take, the greater income you have. Yeah. That's why the CEO makes the most money, or at least they should, right, know, right. as long as they don't have a horrible business IQ. Right. Yeah. Because everything's on their shoulders. Everything's on their shoulders. Yeah. Right. They have the ultimate responsibility. That's and why coaches get fired for, first instead of players. 100%. You know? 100%. Yeah. And that's why a guy like, uh, just as a simple example, like an Elon Musk, he's taking a lot of responsibility for a lot of people, a yeah. lot of humanity. How he's using it is irrelevant. I'm just saying my point is, is he's a multi, multi-billionaire. Yeah. And he has taken, decided to assume the responsibility, right? Yeah. Without fear of essentially destroying, mm. right? But you will only be able to create to the degree that you're willing to destroy. Mm. And so most people aren't willing to destroy. Uh, do you think that they also have a problem controlling themselves? Right? 100%. So, so how do you how do, how can you go about manipulating other people's emotions if you can't even control yours? That's exactly why our, our entire company. Yeah, no, I, I know. That's you why know? you do a good job, yeah. right? And because if you can you have to be able to control your emotions yes. first. Yeah. It's real critical with the sales people in my experiences. You almost have to make sure their whole life is straight. Right? Yes. Because if their life gets chaotic yep. and they, they just start spinning out of control, it's going to affect their sales numbers mm-hmm. because this is, this is all a mental game, mm-hmm. right? Like you're not lifting anything. You're not using money. You're not using your muscles to make any money, right? Yep. It's, it's all money with your mind. Yep. Right. And if your mind is all fucked up, is going to reflect in your sales. So I, if some one of my sales guys numbers start slipping, I get on a call with them and we go through a lot of this stuff. You know, yep. I have different tools and techniques that I, I do with them to help them get their life together. It's never, it's yep. almost never the sales stuff that we work on. Yeah. Right. We work on like organizing their life, solving problems they have in their life. Yeah. And then as that'll a re- be distracting for them. Exactly. Yep. And as a result, they get better sales mm-hmm. because a lot of times sales guys, what they'll, they'll let the prospect influence their state. Mm-hmm. Like I've seen that before on calls, right? Like they'll, they'll get the prospect, will get all scared or weird. And then the sales guys start acting weird, but you got to be able to maintain your state and control theirs. Yep. So, you know, I call it the head of state. Like who's the head of state right now, <laughs> right? Who's, who's, in, who's leading the state or who's following? Somebody is, yep. right? Or unless you're just a match. Like when we were all out to dinner, we were all on the same page last night. Correct. Right? But, you know, in this context, somebody's got to be, in charge of state. So check this out. So when we talk about, and there's a training on this in the, in the description uh, of this, but essentially there's you, the body and the mind. So the real you is that, you know, when you're, when we were talking about, um, 
Well, have you ever been in a situation where like you felt like somebody was looking at you and you turned around and they were yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So that's not just the brain, mm-hmm. right? There's something that there's some connection there, yeah, yeah. right? So there's this you that's this energy. So there's the real you. So I look at it like as outside the body a bit mm-hmm. because there is when you're, you know, you can feel the tension in a room. Yeah. With, even if you're closing your eyes, you can feel the tension in a room. Mm-hmm. Right. And so there's more than just the body. Mm-hmm. There's more than just the brain. So there's the body, there's you, and then there's this mind that has all of these past experiences in it. And each of the salesperson or the CEO, or this, this could be you and a prospect, you and a partner relationship, you and another individual or group of people. And so what happens is, is something in present time, like buyer's resistance. Well, the last thing that they bought, they might not yeah. have gone so well. So they have this memory that comes in this prospect. They have this memory that comes in and acts as like the shield of a lens. Mm. Okay. And so what happens is, let's say they come in like, yeah, what you got, motherfucker? Yeah, right? yeah. Well, that might trigger you if you right. aren't in control of yourself to also have a fuck you lens show up. And now you have, instead of two actual beings communicating with each other, you have two minds throwing their shit at each other. Uh, and so that's why it's super important for both, for the at least the sales guy in this situation, he who does not have this aspect going on has the ability to essentially discharge this shield. Yeah. And so when you ask, how do you discharge a shield, you ask? Well, you do that by asking questions. So what's really cool is this shield, you you felt like when you get an objection, it's like an energetic ridge, mm. right? Mm-hmm. It's like this wall that you, shows you up. See, you can feel you their can state feel it, things, right? You can see it as a visual. Like I can, I can watch a sales call on mute and just look yeah, at the faces and exactly. can, uh, feel the energy. So you can feel this yeah. energy, this energy here, if you want to call this uh, negative, quote, energy, mm. okay? You can feel this being shot at you. Now, mm. that's okay if you, and how do you do that? By their communication. Yeah. That's how they shoot it at you. Yeah. They say, fuck you, you're an idiot, this don't won't work. Or, or, or they don't say anything. Or they don't say anything. Right. Or, 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 or they say That's nice not discharging things. it though. Yeah. So what I'm saying is I want that's why I want to get to the real shit. So when you get to the real shit and they start communicating those things to you, what happens is these little particles of negativity, if you will, if you can just absorb them and not have them trigger your shit. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, if you do that enough and they keep essentially shooting these negativity particles at you, they're going to shoot so many that essentially this little thing they don't have anything left to shoot. Mm. So if you're in an argument with somebody or you're handling, uh, trying to handle an objection, your best thing to do is say, any other thoughts on that? Yeah, what let, else do you have let to them get it all out. You let, it's like when you get something off your yeah, chest, let right? Get it all out. It's like, all right, is that it? It's like, <sighs> yeah, it's it. Don't fight against don't it. Don't fight against it. Don't fight right? against it. And so now what you're doing is instead of prior when it was two basically bullshit minds just minding at each other, mm-hmm. now you can actually get into a real dialogue with the being. Yeah. And you're not talking to their mental bullshit anymore. Yeah. And so your job is to A, keep your shit together and B, allow them to discharge their shit so that you can actually create an actual communication connection line. Mm-hmm. What a lot of people think are communication and connection line is just fucking mind talking mm-hmm. at people mm-hmm. and nothing's actually landing. And so you got to get good at discharging that. Otherwise, you'll be like, why is this? I never felt like I had a connection with the person. They just didn't want to talk to me. Well, that's because you didn't allow them the space to discharge their shit. Mm-hmm. And when you do, that builds enormous trust. And I'm like, because well, nobody else is skilled enough to ha- hold that space for them. Yeah. Nobody is skilled enough to allow that. It's like a controlled explosion. Yeah. Right. It's like in, in, uh, there was, the old Batman Forever movie. Mm. So there's this huge bomb that's going to go off in Gotham City, of course. Right. And so at, by the end of the movie, not to ruin it for you people, uh, but, you but they, he, basic, yeah, yeah. he basically <laughs> takes this thing out into the Atlantic Ocean with his little, you know, flying Batmobile thing yeah. and drops it in the ocean. The Batmobile plane. Controlled, yeah. The Batmobile plane. <laughs> It has a controlled explosion, yeah. right? Versus an uncontrolled explosion that causes devastation. Uh, so what you want to do is when all objections, all upsets is if you're still getting them and you're not, and they continue and persist, you're not allowing them a space to essentially have a controlled yeah. explosion. And so I'd rather have a controlled explosion rather than just like blame the, just like, I don't know, some prospects, this, that, and the other, just like, nah, they're all, the anatomy here is all the same with everybody. And it's all handled the same. What you're saying makes a lot of sense. I never thought about it in, in that context because, you know, what a lot of people do when they get an objection or something, they try to, they, they what they think it's handling is trying to convince them that it's not that, no. what, like, what if it's just, for example, man, you know, just, you know, I'm not sure I need to think about it. And maybe they say, man, you know, I've been scanned before or something mm-hmm. like that. 
and they'll be like, well, "This is not a scam. We got all this right yeah. here." They start telling them, telling, talking at them. What what I like to do is I like to go into that deep, deeper, mm-hmm. and it, it's kind of like what you just it's said. Exactly. So I'll say, okay, so l- l- let's let's think about this, man. Like maybe, yeah. Well, what if this was a scam? Like, what would that mean for you? Let's say mm-hmm. we scammed you, right? Yeah. yeah. What, what would that mean? What if this was an elaborate, yeah. mean, multi million dollar scam? What would that mean for you? Mm. Like, you know, I lose money. Okay, and, and how's that going to affect you? Mm. Right, you know, and then, yeah. and then, and then, oh well, you know, I just have have uh, you know, I have less money than I have. Like, well, damn, man, what's that going to mean? Like, you're not going to be able to pay your bills, or you're not going to, mm. you know, no, I'll be able to pay my bills. It'll just, it'll just suck. Mm. And, and, and it's something like you never recover from, or right, <laughs> and they're like, no, I will recover for it. It would just be bad, right? Like, mm. You know, we just keep, I just keep yeah. going into it, and. And, and but not trying to say it's not that. Yeah, I can get them to explain it again. The match or mismatch exactly. thing. Because yeah. you say it's not. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. exactly what the last motherfucker who scammed me said. I get them to bring it to its logical conclusion. Yes. Like I go deeper to it because they might think, oh, it's just a scam. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's all they thought. Yeah. But you know, if we go deep enough, it's usually like, you know, it won't be a big deal. It's like, yeah. man, I'll, I'll be. You know, I won't have as much money for certain stuff forever or yeah. for how long are we talking? You know, oh man, for like a few months, a few months, like how long would it take you to get that money back doing mm-hmm. what you're doing or get get back to where you need? I don't know, man, two, three months. Okay. So after two, three months, you back together, you get your, your shit back together. A year from now, would it would this be like a big deal? Something you kept, you stayed up at night sweating over or, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? I also call those extreme no questions, right? Yeah. Like I, I, I ask questions I know they're going to say no to. You're right? Yeah, like, yeah. Would this ruin you financially forever? Or, yeah. right? And then, no, I wouldn't. Okay, so what would it do? Right? And I get them comfortable with the idea of it being a scam. Right. <laughs> like if it's a, if it's a scam, it's okay. Right. Then we just say there. Yeah. And then so after, worst case scenario, you still fine. you'll be fine. Yeah. A year from now, best you're case scenario, you get point B. Point B. Yeah. And I I, I don't even say that because I never want to. I'm real conscious about not trying to convince them. Yeah. Right. So I I so so the worst case happen is blah blah blah, and you'll be fine a year from yeah. now. Like yeah, all right. Well, let's. I, I might say something like, oh, bro, it sounds like you have two options. Right. No matter how long you take to think about it, it's like one, you could just not do this. Right. And you don't have to take no kind of risk, on no chances, uh, and you, you can stay real nice, safe, and comfortable. And you know you, you you're not on the path to get what you want, right? For sure. But you get to keep that thousand dollars or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. You you don't put that at risk, yeah. right? Or you can go for, it, right? Yeah. You know, then, then we kind of and, yeah. and whether it works or not, right? At least you tried, man. You can look yourself in the mirror and be like, you, you didn't, it wasn't your fault you failed. Yeah. It wasn't your fault you stayed where you are at, right? You tried. At least you can say, hey, man, it was our fault. We were, we were the scammer. But it's isn't that better than just not even trying anything? Or, or you tell me. Yeah. You know, I, w- I wouldn't even say that last part. That was a mistake. Who'd you rather be, the guy who yeah. didn't try? That's what I. That's what I, yeah. I say. Something like that. No. Yeah. But before before that, I'll say. Let me ask you, which one of those options would you be most proud of? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and they said, well, the second one, uh, they always say the second one. It was like, uh, and, uh, why don't you just do that? Yeah. And then, then they'll say, I still need time to think about it. And that's when I'll get more like you, where I'll be like, all right, so you mean to tell me you need mm. two weeks to see if you want to make the decision you know you're going to be most proud of? Is that what you're telling me? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> on, the, on the scam thing. So it's really cool because I have a totally different way I'd handle the scam thing. Go for it. I'd love to hear it, man. Maybe I'll, so, maybe I'll steal it. Uh, I hope you do. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you do. So keep in mind, back to this back to this thing, people have their mind that comes in that you might uh, think of it as the uh, reptilian brain mm-hmm. fight for survival, the, you know, uh, fight, flight, avoid that whole thing. Um, I teach it a little bit different, but it's the same concept. So ultimately, if somebody's afraid of something being a scam, mm-hmm. what's really happening in their mind is so here's past present time future so you would so here's present time on this call past Mm. present okay great so if they're afraid of something being a scam that means that the only reason that exists is because they have instances in their past that they think the mind's like a mirror Mm. so they think that this past experience is going to happen again mm-hmm. in the future. Okay, that makes sense. And so their hope they're trying to avoid this. So this present time situation reminded them. Mm. So it minded put their mind in front of them again. Right. Of this past time of said scam. Uh. And so this is the charged. These are the charged events that you have to discharge. Mm. Right. And the only way to get them to discharge is by asking about them. Yeah. So okay, what if this is a scam? Have you been scammed in the past? 
podcast. Yeah. Yes, I have. Oh, tell, tell me, me more about, about that. Yeah, tell me more about that. Well, this happened, that happened, this happened, that happened. Good. Was there any other time that you got scammed in the past? Ah. Yeah, this happened, that happened, this happened, that happened. Got it. Any other time you got scammed in the past? Then you just go through the, uh, those are the main ones. Got it. So what about what you're experiencing currently here? Is it that leads you to believe that this is exactly like those things? Mm. And they'll go, they'll think about it and they'll be like, well, I guess it's not. Or they'll say this and I'll be like, tell me about that. And I'll do the same thing. Uh, And they'll be like, well, I guess it's not the same. Okay, got it. So do you still feel as though this is a scam? Uh, No. Why not? What? Oh, yeah. You you get them to tell you. Yeah. You get them to tell you. That's super good. You know, I've I've, I've done a version of that. Like I've asked that question. Yeah. Like, have you been scammed in the past? But what I would what I would do in the past is I would say. All right, so how did that affect you? Mm-hmm. Was, that, was that something you like never recovered from? Or like, yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> right. So what I do is I, what, what, instead of trying to say that the objection is not real mm-hmm. or try to convince them that it's not this, I, I like what you did a lot. I, I, I really like it. Um, what I would, what I would normally do is basically, if I think about it, like they have a goal, mm-hmm. right? And in, 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 in front of them is fear, yep. right? And I, I kind of imagine the fear like fire, yep. like a, a wall of fire. What we're trying, what I try to do is, is get them, is get the fire to go down enough that they can just walk over. Yeah. Right. And I think we're doing, we're What doing I'm getting to, to try to see is that there's actually no fire. There's no fire. I want the, uh, and I've always wanted them to say, okay. Because again, even, fear isn't real. Yeah. Even, even if the worst case scenario happened, I'll be fine. Yes. Right. You know, uh, but I give it, I like this too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, this works real well because you don't have to even, you don't, you barely have to do anything. Yeah. You barely have to do anything. And they tell you about their past things. And it's just like, all right, so is there a chance that this isn't that? Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a chance. Got it. Why do you say that? Now, here's the thing. Ideally, you would never have to use this because Correct. the marketing was so good up front. Correct. Right? Like, but they could also, yeah. like, when they come on the call, they'll be like, all right, pitch me, motherfuckers. This is one of those scam things. Like, yeah. then you'd have to handle it, like, right then and you then. Can. You know yeah. what I mean? That, that, I, well, I, you know, we structure our sales process where they see... A bunch of shit. so many right. testimonials. We don't, we don't get scam. Co- yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's but just an example. It is an example because yeah. it will happen sometimes, no matter how much you do. Well, You'll get those people. The, you know? the beauty of this framework is that it has nothing to do with this. This could be any objection. Th- mm. This could be any consideration. Mm. Any consideration. Okay, not just is this a scam? Yeah, right? you do it. It's like, will this process work for me? Have you ever yeah. done a process that didn't work for you? Walk me through that, and walk me through that, walk me through that, and they're like, oh, and I'm like, well, what about this process? Seems similar to that process. Uh, and they're like, oh, it's not. Okay, so what you're saying is there's a chance that you might get different results because this is a different process. Yes. What yeah. makes you say that? Yeah, yeah. that's super good. See what I'm saying? So I like you it a lot. Use, it's the same thing. All objections are them being reminded of some shit in the past. Mm. That's all an objection is. And, and it's not real. The mind isn't a real, isn't in the, again, go through the free training in the description on the explanation of all this, mm-hmm. um, because it will make more sense. But essentially, this is the anatomy of false evidence appearing real. Why fear mm-hmm. is not real. It's past. What our mind does is takes the past experiences and looks at all the things happening in present time and saying, how is this a dangerous thing based on my past library of experiences? Uh. The problem is the mind doesn't segment very well. And so it's like this big cacophony of all this shit playing at the same time and it's scary and confusing and that's why when you're in an argument with somebody they don't make any fucking sense is because it's like playing all their imagine a youtube channel that plays all the videos at the same time over each other yeah and there's like uh uh, 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 that's what the mind does and that's why they have dumbass arguments and defenses for things so when you ask them to actually sort through it they can't uh i see what you're doing i like it a lot what i've always tried to do is just make them i've sometimes made them feel good about the shit that happened in the past, like change the mm. perspective on it. So, man, you got scammed out. Put using a scam example. So, you got scammed out of that. Um, like, how long? How long did it take you to get back on your feet? Oh mm-hmm. man, it was only like a few weeks. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, so you got scammed. You took that like a champ, and then you would, and now yeah. you look at you. You're back out here. <laughs> like that's pretty. That's pretty. You know, I, I like that about you. you. Haven't given up on your goals, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just so, yeah. but you know, I, I, I do certain 100%. like kind of like change their perspective on it. Like, yeah. oh, I went through this bad thing and I came out stronger. Reframe it. Yeah, yeah I re- reframe yeah. it. Uh, but I, I, this is super. How, how do you handle the spouse objection? I get it. I, I we might have different takes on this, but I I, I feel like I I might. Well, first, in, I might a, learn. in a discovery. Um, 
we understand what the decision making dynamic is. Yeah, yeah. It's and the, and we it's the setup. That's what I'm saying. How they enter the sales yeah, call is yeah. so important. Um, and and you can tell by the way somebody answers the question whether it's worth digging deeper into it. It's just like, well, so let's just say hypothetically we get to the end of this call, or at some point down the road you decide you want to work with us in some way. Is this one of those things where? It's just a you decision or is it like, is your spouse involved in any way or you have a partner or somebody else that, you know, yeah. you need to consult with? And they'll be like, um, no, I could probably do it. Like, then it should be like, all right, who else probably? might be involved yeah, yeah. in the situation? I would, I would, right, yeah, I would say probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so either way, it's the yeah. same. We're getting them to expand on mm -hmm. who really has the leverage and then understanding, is that a real thing that I it would be a good idea to respect in this situation or is that a smoke screen? Mm. And so there are situations where it's just like, well, like for example, if I'm not going to buy a house without talking to my wife first, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Not that I need permission, but it's just like, we have to move there as a yeah, family, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So like that would, be, selling, yeah. that would be disrespectful and just ignorant of me not to do that. Yeah. But if I want to buy a fucking something for this office right candy bar. or a candy bar yeah. or a fucking bottle of water like mm -hmm. i don't need to talk to my wife right yeah. so there's a big spectrum of and there are there's it's, there's it's, it's, it's also subjective too right correct like, you know this is what you have a lot of disposable income so some for the office yeah you know it's you know if you want to buy a new computer just get it correct right but if you know someone else right in different circumstances depends 100 percent. Right? Yeah. so understanding the context of who all is involved in the decision making process because it could just be more than the wife it could be and especially in like a b2b situation it yeah. could be a fucking there's the coo the cso the ceo the controller of the finances they're budgeting their account like they have a different decision making process For so sure. what i'm really trying to understand is how do you guys typically make decisions like this now most people don't have a decision making framework that they've like actually yeah. been able to articulate so a lot of times asking that question it's like well walk me through your decision making process on solutions like this uh, so yeah it really depends on what you're selling it depends on what you're selling. But I, what I'm trying to understand isn't how do I get the spouse on board or off board? What I'm trying to understand is how are you currently thinking through your decision making process? And if I want to isolate that one person as the decision maker, which is my main goal, if I want them to get them to say yeah. yes, right then and there on that call without involving anybody else, mm -hmm. what I'll try to get them to do is essentially induce a doubt in their decision making process. So yeah. I'll associate pain and uncertainty with their decision making process. Now, usually that's not that hard because mm -hmm. if you ask somebody to explain to you their decision making process, they and never, they can't they do never it, outlined which it. they can't. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, I don't know. I guess I just kind of feel my way to the decisions. Got it. So you're feeling your way to your decisions. Is it safe to say that that's led the way you've made decisions up until this point has led you to the uh, situation that you're in that you told me you didn't want to be in anymore? Mm. Yes. All right, cool. So, um, is it safe to say that in order to get to where you want to go, that there might be a slight tweak in yeah. a decision making process that might need that might be worth investigating? Uh, right. So I, I, I use like I'm inducing little not like, do you see that you make decisions like a fucking moron? You know, it's like I'm. it's like, is there a slight chance that we might? If we if a tweak is made, it might create a different result. Yeah. Yes. Why do you say that? Yeah. You know it, that's super good. You can you can induce doubt in anything. Like, mm -hmm. I, I use the example with my sales guy. I'm like, man, what what nationality are you? He said, oh, I'm I'm Irish. How you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, like what Eli does. But the, what's your name? Oh, was he? You ever seen? Okay, so Eli, he does this on like every. This is it's kind of a shtick, but it's relevant. Uh, He's like, uh, what's your name? So I'll do. What's your name? Brandon. How do you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right. I do it with race. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, it's on my driver's license. It's like, well, how do? You, but what makes that it? Like, your well, my parents named me. How do you know they didn't lie to you? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's on my birth certificate. It's like you know, like, and he just kind of continues to follow that down. So it's like, so there's a chance that your name actually isn't that. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, right. I, I do that. Uh, so what this example I use is race. Oh, so you're Irish. I, I, how do you know that exactly? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, my my parents are Irish. Well, how, how do you know that? What they told me. Okay, um, they, 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 have, they, I'm sure they're great people, right? Have they I'm ever sure. lied to you? Have they ever lied to you? Yeah, like, Santa Claus, Two Fairy, anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I did miss that part. Eli, yeah, yeah. I did miss that part. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You? Oh, did I steal this from Eli? I don't know. You might have. I don't know. It yeah. probably was some, some, some book somewhere. Yeah, and um, and and it was like, well, yeah, it was like, hmm. And so I won't even like be as aggressive as, as yeah. you. It's like, it like call out. I'm like, hmm. yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're a hundred percent sure, a hundred percent sure that they didn't lie to you about this or were wrong mm. about this. Well, 
wrong? Like, have they ever said anything you do was wrong? Yeah. Right. Have they have they ever been wrong? Are they infallible? <laughs> right. You know, like no, they've been wrong before. Mm, okay. Someone had a gun in your head and your DNA test. Mm. You got to do the 23 and me. <laughs> would you let them pull the, yeah. would you, would, 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 you know what I'm saying? There's a chance that there's a 1% there's a German one, in there. Yeah, is there is there any percent of chance that it just might not be true? Maybe they didn't lie, maybe they did lie, or maybe they didn't lie and they, they were just wrong, maybe mm -hmm. someone lied to them, or maybe they got the wrong information somewhere. Yeah. Is there any chance? Yeah, mm, how mm. big of a chance? Yeah. <laughs> right, like, you know, you can, you can induce doubt. Mm -hmm. If anything. And so that's back to the spouse thing. That's what I'll try to do first is get them to see that because they they'll try to posture because it's and all of this is a defense mechanism yeah. against basically being fucked. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so like uh, that's uh, fundamentally understanding what we covered like 10 minutes ago is the anatomy of this because they're like, oh, I got to check with my spouse because they're thinking anybody in their right mind wouldn't disrespect that. That's my maybe. way out. And so maybe. Yeah, they might. You, no, no, you're, you're right. No, I forgot to say you're right because I have a rule. If it's not the very first objection, mm -hmm. it's not real. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> no, that's correct. And so what I'm trying to understand is there. I'm trying to get them to a point to first doubt their decision making process and yeah. doubt their certainty in their ability to figure shit out. They wouldn't be on this call with me to solve this fucking problem yeah. if they already had their shit together. And and if they didn't want it. And, right. They wouldn't be on the call if that's they didn't want point. it. That's my point. And so um, that's like the first thing I try to do because then that like, so what are you going to do if your wife says no? Let's say you, let's say yeah. by some miracle, I you decide you want to become a client of ours and that you're told no, you're just going to, what are you going to do? Yeah. Well, I do it anyway. All right, cool. So then I'll just proceed through the call. Yeah. So I'm, what I'm hearing is you have you have the decision making leadership in your relationship to be able to make this decision for yourself mm -hmm. without consulting her. Oh, but then they'll say, then they'll say, I do. Yeah, they, I do it, it out of respect. Right. Yeah. Right. What What I do is I ask. I, I pretty much. So what What if she says no? Mm -hmm. Right. And they'll say, Oh, they say I do it anyway, or they say. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll say that because they're going to say one of two things. They're going to say, I'll do it anyway, or uh, some other dumb shit, right? And then they say, I'll do it anyway. And then sometimes I'll be like, all right, well, let's just, let's just do it anyway, right? Mm -hmm. You know, or, or and then, say, then they'll say, well, no, it's just a respect thing. And I'm like, mm, okay. And what I'll, what I'll do is, if, because if he says he'll do it anyway, then it's like he can do it, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, he's capable of it, right? It's not like a thing. Then I'll say, well, all right, well, what what amount of money can you spend without it being disrespectful mm -hmm. right like i don't know like do you do you have to have a conference of everything you spend like candy bar t-shirt you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know underwear or like you got to sit down it's a difference it, it, i'll make a joke about it to yeah. laugh right cuz i don't i want i don't want a lot of attention and then if possible and not always mm -hmm. if possible i'll just be like all right boom the payment plan starting there <laughs> you know <what> I'm yeah. <laughs> if possible right you know cuz when I was doing sales, cause I was doing like 10 a day. Right. So it's like, I, I can't stay too long with this yeah. motherfucker. Right. So, all right, cool. I know I can get it. I know I can get him in the program with this and we can move on. Right. Without having to get his life, yeah. life around it better. Or, or they say, instead of I do it anyway, it's like, Oh man, I guess I figure something else out. Then I, I got to stay there. Like figure something else out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, what oh, do you mean by that? Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, all right. So it sounds like if you, if your wife's not on board, you just, not gonna you're not gonna go after you're just gonna have to like give up on this mm -hmm. you know i say I, I don't say it like a dick right yeah yeah, it's yeah. Like not, if your wife's not on board man you're just gonna have to give up on this you know and just keep doing what you're doing it, it sounds like it right you mm -hmm. go like yeah 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 i mean no 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 we just like oh, oh. Then, I say, well, then i go if you were to say no we should not say no to the to the program or the price mm -hmm. yeah right you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you handle the wife's objection yeah yeah uh, yeah what, what about the price it, it's usually be the price right mm -hmm. um if i did a good job and okay is it that you guys don't have it or she would just wouldn't want you to to, to yeah. spend that much because those are two that you can go either way if mm -hmm. they don't have it i'm like oh what the fuck are we talking about then <laughs> right here what do you have motherfucker right and if yeah. they don't then we got to talk about payment plans right and but if he says no she just you know she just might not want me to spend that much because we got all this other stuff then I, I go to my heart's hypothetical, worst thing that can happen. Mm. What's the worst thing that happen if you spent, let's hypothetically, I'm not asking you to do anything. Let's say you spent this money today, right? What's the worst thing that happen? Because I don't want to put you in any danger, mm -hmm. right? I don't want to put your family in any danger. Like how bad would it get mm -hmm. if, if worst case scenario if you spent this, like are you guys going to be homeless? You and the family going to be out on the street with signs, you living under a bridge, <laughs> eating out soup cans. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I'm making a little joke about it, right? And then no, it won't be that bad. Well, how bad would it be? So that's, that's the kind of what I do. I make them go through the whole thing, yeah. get it all out, how bad it would be and to the point where it's like, oh, it's not that scary. Sometimes it's not that scary when you look at it. Yeah. 
you know, yeah. and all right, I get in. They usually come to the point where, yeah, I guess it wouldn't be that bad. Sometimes they still might have to. Yeah. It depends. Sometimes. For 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 at least us, right? Being in, you know, kind of we're as as building building entrepreneurs, we're building leaders. Yeah. Right. So with us, it's very uh congruent to approach it a little bit more of a, from a meta standpoint. Mm-hmm. So you kind of handle like the financial logistics as the objection, right? Uh, the logistics or their feeling about the potential loss. Yeah. Right? I get them. I get, I, I'm really trying to bring the fear down. Right. So know? check me out. Um, I have, this is what's awesome is like that works, but also like, yeah, no, if we, I can learn something, is, you know, I'm, what we, this yeah. is why I wanted to do this yeah. is because like we both do shit that works, but it's different. Different styles. Right. Yeah, yeah. So what I'll do is something to the effect of, so as a as a business owner, right, do you feel as though leadership is an important quality? Uh, I see what you I see. Yes. All right, cool. So as your business grows, uh, at what point are you, and there's a lot of different ways. So the, yeah. just what I'm doing right now is just like off the top of my head. Yeah. There's so many ends depending on other contexts that might be more appropriate or relevant. So I'm just like, I'm kind of just riffing here, which this could go a number of different ways and still work. You know, so before you get real quick, before you get into that, what I like about this conversation mm. is, is, is really different stuff. Like you're way more aggressive than me. However, I think most salespeople when they, especially when they start, yeah. they're not aggressive enough. Yeah. Right. It, it, it just shows like you can, you can, you can be more aggressive. Like yeah. You can be more aggressive than you. I mean, we're the make... bulletproof entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you'd expect a little bit of it. You know, oh, well, I think right. that's all right. Yeah. So I, I approach it with <laughs> way, way more compassion. Yeah. Right. Like, um, but that's not better or worse. Again, it may be me yeah. compensating for people being intimidated by me. You know what I'm saying? Like, could be. I think just a mental yeah. thing. Right. Um, but I like this. Keep going, yeah. keep, going, keep going. Well, I only believe that like I'm only serving you if I actually help you get the result. Mm. And how are you going to trust me if I'm a fucking pussy? Mm. Right. So who are you going to trust? Is the, who's the leader in any situation? Yeah. It, like who who are you going to be? Like that guy is leading us into battle, uh, right? So you're like some fucking soft snowflake. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm not going to be mean to you, yeah. but the reality of the situation is you hate point A and you want to get to point B, and the only thing stopping you is the bullshit that's coming out of your mouth right now. That's the reality of it. And so it's just like, I have a responsibility to navigate that in a way that gets you to point B. Mm. You know what I mean? So, and also I have to be, uh, I have, I have to create a strong, firm structure because they're, they're here because they don't have a strong, firm structure. You know what I mean? So if I let them flap all over the place, I'm not serving them. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And so, um, where I kind of go is like the leadership route and like the, who do you want to be route kind of a thing. So Mm. let me explain what I mean. Um, let me try to reorient myself. So how, in lead, in business, do you believe leadership is an important quality? Yes. Cool. So up until this point, how do you feel as though you've been like, or what do you define as a good leader? Mm. Right. Somebody who probably they usually go with somebody who makes decisive, like they have a vision, they make it happen no matter what, you know, like yeah, all this yeah. stuff. Right. And so again, I'm building my, I'm building my archive of their leverage that are their words mm. that now mm. it's like, well, so you feel as though in business, you need to be a good leader. How about in your relationship? Who's the leader in the relationship? Mm-hmm. And if they go, she is, then I'll just be like, so how, how is it that you've arrived at this point in your life without carrying, without being the leader in the relationship? Uh, and if they say, and you probably say the same thing if they say we both lead, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, hundred yeah, yeah. percent. Yeah. Just like at the end of the day, there's, there's some, and now are you both partners in the business? Mm. You know, what do you plan on doing? And then I'll just start inducing doubt in that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, well, what happens if God forbid, um, something happens and you guys aren't together anymore. I'm probably, probably that's not going to happen, uh, but like what ultimately where I'm going with this is what I'm trying to do is ask questions to get that person, whether it's the, the wife on the phone she needs the husband or the husband on the phone, she needs the wife yeah. or he needs a wife. Yeah, it's, it's not, um, gen- it's gender it's, neutral. It's, gender, it's, it's just like it's, spouse. We have decision making dynamics yeah. here and there are objections probably from both parties. I'm trying to get the one party to not need the other party in this case, right? Yeah. And decide like, well, how do you plan on making decisions in your business if you constantly need to consult somebody else? Not just mm. your wife, but somebody else. Or he's not, yeah. Right? So I'm not taking the wife out of the picture and I'm trying to shift the belief of the decision making framework of I yeah. make the fucking decisions of things that I know I need for me because if I can't do that I can't serve my relationship if I can't do that I can't serve my business and if I can't do that I can't serve the world and I'm a mm-hmm. fucking basically a useless person so I'm trying to shift the ultimate decision making dynamic because I'm trying to build leaders you see what I'm saying yeah I'm, so when does that start that starts fucking now yeah it's like I'm I'm, I'm experiencing reluctance to this concept 
but I, I I think it's because of I have a bias mm-hmm. towards my so I'm, I'm trying to like get rid of my bias and really like yeah. feel it right because I know it works because yeah. I, I I know you get money right yeah. you know and so I ended, I ended up using it with you Not yeah necessarily yeah, yeah context, we did, we, but we've done yeah. it for sure yeah. for sure you know like yeah. I know that and hmm that's it's so because you you and I've mentioned this too like in our uh a couple calls that we had ago yeah I'm just like either I am a complete lunatic and I am reckless and I have the biggest balls in the world and I don't give a fuck or I actually know what the fuck I'm talking yeah. about you know what I mean like because who you know mm. who disputes the great Brandon Carter right? right who has the balls to do that right yeah. and that's why are you here right yeah. nobody in your life talks to you the way that I talk to you right right, right. so with this object with the, just the objection in general like you you kind of like approach it from a different i go way higher level yeah where i try to like i try to move you around. handle like kind of it's it seems as though yeah it still works though oh yeah to be very clear you're it seems as though you're handling like the micro logistical kind of a you're handling the objection itself i'm handling a the different overall you're going belief different places. system i think what you're doing is 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 might be harder it's probably harder, but it's. it's I, believe, I think it might be better after. Like you, you probably get less object. You probably don't get, I get another no objection. objection. I get no objections after the fact. Yeah, you probably get no objections. Yeah. Where like well, my way, you, they might have another thing mm-hmm. that we have to get past. Yeah, you know? which is traditional sales, right? You do your discovery, you do your pitch, then you handle objections. Yeah, I do discovery, you handle it all objections up all up front. And this is where in my work with Dan Henry, which mm-hmm. that'll be a baller episode, and I'll link that somewhere here too. Um, one of the things that he does really well, and I believe I do pretty well, is is the whole point is if they believed everything that you needed them to believe, they wouldn't have objections, right? Yeah. So in your marketing, the mar- you're also handling those objections in marketing so that when they come to the call, theoretically, they have less, right? That's why that's why how I started this with Correct. like mar- marketing's job is to make in a perfect world, right. your marketing is so good that your sales guys are just ordered. But things. each person still has their own individual flavors of the marketing handled objection yeah. that you have to then handle. But even then, I'm still, my job is to shift their beliefs, not to handle objections. So mm. in the discovery process, what I'm doing is discovering their beliefs. And if I sense one that I know is going to be an objection to A, enrolling and B, actually being successful, yeah. I'm going to squash it right then and there. And I'm going to use that as leverage as the clo- and as a demo of what actually happens with a different thought process i figured it out <laughs> no the reason I, the reason i never handled it like that is because this used to be the worst objection for me mm. because it would make me mad I, I, yeah because i'm okay. like motherfucker you letting some girl mm-hmm. tell you how to spend your own money that you made <laughs> and I, I would i would yep. react to that right so instead so i think I learned to like to scoop past it, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Because it, 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 would, it would bring something up in me. It would yep. trigger me. Which is I, what we illustrated yeah, earlier. Yeah, it would yeah. trigger me like, mother. Like, it almost makes me mad when these guys are like afraid of their wives mm-hmm. or like can't spend their own money, mm-hmm. right? It, 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 and it makes me like them less, mm-hmm. right? As people, yeah. right? So, so it's like well, remember I, everything out that's happening out there is a reflection of you. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I've had you know, yeah, yeah I, I have a it passed, yeah. right? You know, so it, it's. I think I what I learned was to just mm-hmm. skillfully almost dodge it. Like, yeah. how do we get around it so so they feel good about it? Yeah. Right? Okay. The worst thing can happen is I, I can handle it. Be fine. I guess that's not big of a deal. Yeah. Right. But you, but yours is more like you 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 come at them from a higher level. Yeah, yeah. who's actually running the show here is where I'm coming mm-hmm. from, mm-hmm. right? And it's like you need the opinion of this, that, and the other. It's just like who are you as a leader that, and then we like so oh, you got well. But okay, you got to change. Like that seems so much harder, and it probably because is because you have to change so years of conditioning in one call. Yeah, I do it pretty quick though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's good, it's good. But I ultimately, mean, it's I the I it's kind of like handling the uh it's kind of like so the thing there's preventative medicine and then there's um yeah you know he, solution based like get prescribed mm. a thing type medicine right i'm more instead of the way and it, it both have their times and places and working it's just how i approach it is always from a preventative standpoint is if i can kill what caused the tumor then i don't even have to think about what prescriptions or surgeries yeah. are needed to solve the tumor because it won't show up. That makes a lot of and sense. And so yeah. you got to prevent objections, yeah, not, not correct. Thinking. So all I'm so what am I doing is I'm shifting the beliefs that if they believe this, they couldn't possibly have this objection. Like yeah. they would feel dumb saying those words based on what they told me over here. Uh, so what I uh, the way I've always looked at it was if they want it bad enough, mm-hmm. 
they'll deal with the objections, whatever, whatever objections in front, in front of it. Like, I don't get, need them to believe anything. I need mm. them to want it bad enough. You need them to believe that they need it bad enough. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Like, like for example, junkies, heroin addicts, spend yeah. like close to six figures on yeah. heroin, right? They figure it out because mm-hmm. they want it so bad. They have to have it or they get sick. Yeah. Right. So knowing what they're capable of, yeah. right? If they, you know, is okay. If I can get the desire, the pain, and the pleasure, yeah. So, so much pain that they can't stay here no mm-hmm. matter what, right? For example, this is the analogy I use, you know, on 9-11, a lot of people jumped out the window mm-hmm. because it was so hot and so much smoke. They jumped out the window. These people, they were regular people, man. They were, they were going to go. They had wives yeah. and kids and they were just going, but it was so much pain. They jumped out the window, mm-hmm. right? They'd yeah. rather jump out the window mm-hmm. of a building then stay in that pain, yeah. right? Which is super sad, right? I'm not trying to make light of that, right? You know, um, but that analogy is like, okay, if the pain is so bad, fuck with this wife yeah. got to say, I got to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying though is we're both saying the same thing, but yeah, because I'm creating a pain with, in this case, it's the pain. It's like, it's kind of like, there's all these lower, let's stay with red because they're all objections. There are all these lower level objections that are probably on a sales script of some sort. That, yeah. And then here's the handler for each one, right? Mm. Well, there's only a few fundamental beliefs that kind of lead to each one. And there's only really one core belief that kind of leads all of those is, is who's in charge. Mm. And are you actually the guy, the person who's going to make this happen or are you not? Uh. And so if I ship this one, it's kind of like in uh, in um, like Star Wars, for example, when they destroy the Death Star, like all the other, like you, you kill the leader of a group, yeah. right? All of the followers disperse. Uh, They'll stop fighting because the leader's gone. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking for the leader belief and going, if I handle that one and I see where they're at with their ability, their, their confidence and their ability to make their own calls, mm-hmm. right? Well, then all these little, I don't have to have scripts for this. You know, like I, I can still know little tacticy bullshit sh- things to say, uh, but ultimately they won't say any of this if I handle this because this type of person doesn't say these things. It's super interesting. Yeah, I think you're. I, I think you're right. It, 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 it's interesting because we look at it from a different perspective. Yeah. right? you're kind of looking at it, it. They both work. Yeah, it just. I don't know. I. I I'm not. No, I'm not looking at any of this. Okay, right. Like I, I really think it's different. So, you know, one of my heroes. Is a guy named um, um, Nat Turner. Okay. All right. Nat Turner was a slave, right? And during, you know, pre Civil War, obviously, right? And um, he started a big slave revolt where they would all get together and free. And here's the thing I don't think that they were trying to get free, like Mm. Harriet Tubman, right? I think they'd rather die than be slaves, mm. right? They, I think they knew how that story was going to end. Gotcha. Right. And it was like, we're just going to revolt. I don't think that they thought that there was paradise at the end of that, right? Mm. They were, the Harriet Tubman was like, we're going to go up north, yeah. which is probably smarter, right? But I think, I don't think they saw that as a, I don't think they had the Underground Railroad and they, they saw a path out. So they said, we're just going to fight and die, mm. <laughs> right? So nobody wants to die, but the pain was so bad yeah. that they were willing to die. Mm-hmm. So I rushed it like they want the pain is so bad and the pleasure is so good that they're willing to rush into these things. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of like, right. They're willing to actually piss their wife off or they're willing to actually mm-hmm. risk going broke or losing a bunch of money because they want it so bad. Mm-hmm. But it's, they end up both prospects end up in the same spot. Correct. Uh, I think we're just doing it different way. Yeah. Or we come at it from a different with a different mindset. Yeah. And they both work because they're both ultimately fundamentally doing the same thing. Uh, I'm just like how I look at it mm. is I'm associating the pain with just the one main thing. Yeah. Whereas it, it still works to kind of handle the I'll say the lower tier yeah. like the the it's almost like if you look at symptoms and problems. So here's the problem. Mm. Um, these are all symptoms. Mm. of the problem so that's all i'm saying yeah yeah you know no, I mean? it's good. so if i can do this that's just my thought process and i realize yes it is way more i'll say advanced to yeah, a degree yeah. uh it's way less like traditional sales get objection handle objection right move on with life and they both work um I we're, just, we're both trying to not get objections though yes from a different um yeah we, co- we come at it from different angles yeah right you know like um you know 
two plus four is six, but you know, three times uh, two is six as well, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like there's no, yes, correct. there's infinite ways correct. to get to six where yeah. you just, I'm using multiplication, you're, you, or you're using multiplication, yeah. and I'm using addition, right? But it's, 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 just, there's infinite ways mm-hmm. to get the number six. Yeah. Like you, you know. just have to have a main, a main case that you're making essentially, yeah. and then just keep relating things back to that. So like for us, it's uh, like how you think essentially, mm-hmm. right? So um, one of our main core like videos. Oh, this is why it makes sense because of what you're selling. I think that's that makes a, a big a big part of it. True. You no, could not, also you could do it with well. anything. Yeah, yeah. Because how you think through anything. Okay. You know. Uh, it's you know what? Super. It's like the big umbrella over all the rest of this shit. You see? Yeah. Because I started with fitness, mm-hmm. where I think it's it may have lent it lent more to pain and 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 pleasure. Yeah. Like more. I think because I I I I really hone my chops in mm-hmm. selling personal training. Yes. It may have lent more to my style. Right. 100%, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. I've I sold, I think, maybe more um, variety of shit yeah. than you. I've sold yeah, for sure. tons of shit, you know, like yeah. just random ass things. Yeah. Right? And so I've had to kind of think meta of like meta, uh, like a more higher level uh, frameworks rather than tactical frameworks. Because mm. what is it that fuels the tactical frameworks is the higher level frameworks. Well, I think it's a... It's a it, I think it, mine is still meta too, right? It's more, but it's 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 like I don't really care about the objections. It's yeah. more, I just want them to want it so bad. Yeah, That's yeah. how I'm thinking about it. So 100%. it's not it's not like it's still. I think it's still up here. It's just I agree. Different, I agree. You know? So like uh, for example, and then we got to wrap and go to mm-hmm. breakfast because you got a flight to catch. Oh, but, that's true. That's true. Um, there's a video that we got um, is the number one thing keeping you from 100k a month, mm-hmm. and ultimately the premise of it is is how you think. Because your current actions, your current way of thinking has led to your current beliefs, which has led to your current actions, which has led to your current results. Ah. And so if I, and I say this in the video, I'm like, if I gave you a pill that instantly allowed you to think like Warren Buffett, Alex Hormozzi, Jeff Bezos, and Brandon Carter combined. You know, set obtainable goals. (laughs) (laughs) But hypothetically, if you took that pill and you immediately thought like multimillionaires and multibillionaires. It would be literally impossible for you to not believe what they believe. Yeah. And if you believe what they believe, you'd take the actions that they take. And if you take the actions that they take, you get the he, results that you, they he get. You wouldn't have to ask some girl uh, for permission to spend his own money. That's right. <laughs> it would be physically impossible for them to not get better results. Yeah. Because what? Because of the tactics and the strategies on the lower level shit or yeah. because of how they're thinking? What's the yeah. fundamental problem is how you're thinking through this. Don't you see? That's the point of the video, right? And then they go, fuck. So now they're like associating pain with how they're currently thinking yeah meaning like oh yeah right uh here, here's how you know if you, and I, i'm like are you a millionaire thinker or an average thinker mm. average thinkers are you know don't like the where they're at this mm. that and the other millionaire thinkers here's are you know multi-millionaires they know exactly what they're doing they're confident in their decisions da, 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 da. Mm. so here's how you know if you're a millionaire thinker yeah you look at your bank account <laughs> if it has two fucking commas or more you're a millionaire thinker. Yeah. If it has less than two commas, you're not a millionaire thinker. It's yeah. impossible to think like a millionaire and not be one. Yeah. It's impossible. Imagine a fat personal trainer, right? Yeah. And it's impossible to have, or excuse me, imagine a fitness model who says, I think like a fat person or a fat person who says, no, I totally think yeah. like a fitness model. You'd laugh. Mm. But there's a lot of people, at least in, you know, people who want to be successful, like, yeah, I think like a millionaire. I think like, no, you fucking don't yet because mm. you don't have two commas. That's the only way you know. How do you like you think like a fitness model? Look at you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this is a person who's not doesn't think like a fitness model. Uh, so you 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 really you're really changing the mindset on 100 percent okay. I do that pre in our marketing yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Yo, I, I I do that more in the marketing. Yeah. And I think on the call, I do I I lean towards like the goal is to make them beg yeah. me for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We, just, we just kind of reinforce the marketing on the call. Yeah. And then so if they're just like, well, I don't know. So is there a chance that your current way of thinking isn't serving you in the way that another way of thinking could? Uh, yeah, there's a chance. So what you're telling me is all the things that your mind wants to serve you right now to say to me to potentially avoid solving this problem is what's keeping this problem in place. Mm. Yeah, cool. So if you let's say you don't work with us, I don't really care. Just you ask me to help you get to point B. So whether that's with us or somebody else, like I don't really care. I just know then it sounds like you just told me that your current way of thinking isn't going to get you to what you want. Mm. So if you don't work with us, what's your game plan to change your way of thinking? Uh, And how confident are you in that plan? I, I think I do a I do a lot of that, but it's a lot more covert. Yeah. For example, I'll say I'll say something like 
when I'm asking about how things are going now with him, like, well, sound like things are going all right for you. Why not just keep doing that, man? I mean, like to, to, we do that too. to start this whole business, it's going to take a lot of work, a lot yeah. of effort, a lot of risks too, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people would be happy with where you're at right yeah. now. Why, I mean, seriously, why not just keep doing that? Yep. They'll tell me why they want more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What does that mean for you? You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. right. So, but it, it, I think, I think it might accomplish a lot of the same mm-hmm. things you're it talking does. about, but because they say yes, at the I'm end, just way more, co- I'm, I'm way more covert. Yeah. Where it's like, you're more. Um, assertive, mm-hmm. you know, hundred percent, yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, and it, uh, for us, like, who are you gonna? It's gonna grow. It's gonna grow. It's gonna grow. Yeah, you know, it's like too. imagine with you if I was not assertive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you would wouldn't be sitting here right now. Well, you know what? I I don't know if it's binary like that. You know, I I don't know. But mm-hmm. when I say I don't know, it's like I, I really don't know, right? Because you 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 could be you could say something like, well, I'll do my guys. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be like. Well, you know what, man? I mean, you don't have to do it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like not. I mean, that not every no, everyone can't be the number one sales guy here, right? Yeah, everyone. You know, somebody's got to be that with you, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like that, yeah. that like, like yeah. that's what I'm saying. It, it both works. They're tools. Yeah, they both work. They're yeah. tools. Yeah, I, I have a bias towards that. Yeah, <laughs> which is cool. I mean, it's it it works. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, but yeah, that's it's really interesting. I think the, what, what would be helpful for the people watching was really cool to get at is that we're both done millions in sales. We both trained sales teams to do millions, even though we have s- different styles. Yeah. Right. And what's important, I think for a salesperson is to find their own style. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, and, and not try to be me, not try to be you. Correct. Cause all my sales guys, their styles are different. Like I have one guy um, named Ethan. He's, he's way more assertive than me. He's, he's more like you. Mm-hmm. And I have Brian, my best friend, Who's a lot more like me? Yeah. Right? Real, real calm, jo- jovial, not, not, not really tripping. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And they're both they they oscillate between number one and number two yeah. <laughs> all the time. You know, and I think I have other guys who just have a totally different style. Yeah. Like I had one guy, he he wasn't emotional at all, but he he was like British, mm. so he just approached it. It almost almost boring, but not nah, nah, he's not boring because he would be real expressive with mm. his tone and and. A lot of dynamics in his voice when he talked, right? Yeah. So it wasn't boring, but it's soup way calmer than all of us, but he was still really yeah. good, you know? Here's, and I think this might be a good place to close. Um, there's a fundamental, and it's the first part of when people go through our stuff. It's literally like the first thing that we mm. cover, and that is intention. Mm. And so, because uh, you and I, we've done speaking, we're in, like, have you ever been in a situation where you were like, on on stage or on camera and like just kind of like words just showed up yeah. and they came to you from somewhere right so oh know, yeah i never prep <laughs> so, yeah, right, <laughs> right 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 so but what wh- here's what's important is all of those styles like what i'm always looking for what's the senior what's yeah. the senior thing here the senior thing is if i don't care if you're a salesperson i don't care if you're you know just a husband a wife you're just navigating life your intention is what dictates everything. Yeah. And so if I intend for you to get a result, which is my job as yeah. a salesperson, my job is to, if I can help you get from point A to point B, I will get you there. I'm yeah. not thinking of my script. I'm not thinking of anything else other than I'm reading you to see where you're at from on the spectrum of point A to point B. Yeah. And it's my job to get you there by whatever means necessary. Yeah. Right. And so that is what fuels those things that happen where you are, you know, you read the situation perfectly. You, um, pull out, you know, the, the trap door strategy when you have to, that you're yeah. like, I wasn't planning on going there, but like, it just made you stats and boom. Yeah. Right. So the intention is what actually gets the deal done. It's That's not right. the tactic. It's not the strategy. No, it's it's the not energy. the style. Yeah, it's the it's yeah. you feeling as though that I actually fucking want you to get to point B, Yeah. maybe even more than you. Yeah. And that is that certainty that I can get you there. I definitely want it more than they want. Exactly. I like 100% I want it more. So than my they want. point is yeah. that's why they're here is because they feel that your intention is so steadfast. Mm. Theirs is obviously not, which is why they're here. Yeah. Cuz cuz if they if, if let's say from a fitness act, but if they get results, mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to be great for their lives. But me I'm gonna get the money, yeah, <laughs> and I'm gonna get and I'm gonna use them as a testimonial That's to right. get way more money. So I, Everybody wins. I definitely want it, want their success more than they want 
<laughs> yeah. But either way, though, is, is my point is all successful salespeople, entrepreneurs, their intention is there. They're not second guessing themselves. They're not second guessing whether, whether this is an actual good move. So if you're people are like, oh, I don't know if I should have said that. I don't know about this script. It's not my style. You can say anything. You can say anything. With, within reason. You with, know? As long as your intention is there. And the, people feel that from you. They can feel the energy. They can feel That's your intention. Yeah. You can feel if somebody's trying to fuck you or somebody's actually trying to help you, which is why I get away with saying some outlandish shit yeah. you know what i mean is because people feel my intention uh you know what i'm saying yeah and so i think that fundamentally is the the fuel that every it's the tip of the umbrella that everything fits under yeah i think what it is 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 more like if we were to look at this yeah right we're trying to get them to we're both trying to get them to believe something mm-hmm. but we come at it from a different track if you're trying to get them to uh, uh, like the person they they need to be yeah right and I'm just trying to get it, get get it through like desire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? yeah. Well, I, I get I'm trying to get them to believe they need it. Mm-hmm. You're trying to get them to believe they need to become something. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a r- wrong one. Either. If they're both intentions that yeah. lead to a sale. Yeah, but we're, it, we're, we both kind of get here. Correct. And then yeah. yeah, they're both intentions that lead the prospect from point A to point B. Yeah. Right. So the ultimate intention is you know mine is more identity based yeah. because the identity fuels the actions and. and the, you and it makes a lot of sense. getting them to want the the result, but they're both like if you're if you get them to want the result, which they do, and you want them to want the result, and you want them to get the result, yeah. Then we're on the same side of the table, chugging forward to point yeah. B together, right? But this, 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 there's, I think in both of our styles, there's both within it. 100%. It's just like it's like a band, right? Like you might you might. Um, same band, same instruments, same yep. five instruments, right? But maybe my song is more bass heavy, right? right? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, you know, like my song, like uh, what's the, um, like 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 Billy Jean is doom, 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 yeah, yeah, doom, yeah. right? So like it's more, it's more, it's built off the bass. Where yours may be built more off the lead guitar or right. the, or the drums or something. Like if you listen to um, uh, uh was um well both we will rock you was like all yeah, all yeah, drums yeah. right right it's still a good fucking song right they're both fucking classics no matter what in the same instruments but i'm leaning on one instrument more than yeah. and you're leaning on another instrument more perfect example both eminem and elton john have won grammys yeah <laughs> oh, <that's perfect. laughs> and but there, there's this, there's elements of each within yeah right you know like um, exactly we like we will rock you has a has a baseline mm-hmm. right you know and thriller has drums exactly you know yeah it's, it's super fucking yeah. Well, I hey, meant Billie Jean, not Thriller, but you, you get it. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Dude, round oh, two has been cool. For sure. That is super interesting. Bro. And, you know, like I love talking to great salespeople because I can always pick, take something away. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not arrogant about my ability, even though the data suggests I could be arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to be because there's always something to learn and yeah. move. So I, I appreciate it. 100% cool. Yeah. 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 We'll have to do a fucking episode three, man. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> on marketing. Oh, 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 yeah. Let's do it. We'll be right back.